Well, where where is our first? Where we're gonna start? Kind of over here and move that way. It, you can. We talked about our main focus this year was going to be on the locusts because the branches are I don't know touching the ground maybe close to it. Yeah, and there's probably a fair amount of deadwood in there, so I'll probably yeah. start in the locust. Okay. Because then there'll I'll give Mark something to do. Okay. There was one I want to make sure to keep him busy. Yeah, he looks like he could get in trouble if he was. Yeah, you, 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 she picked you right. Man, she nailed it. So there might be a fair amount of uh, stick work that you could do on crown raising, you know, basically ground clearance, even like this, this oak, some small droopers. Pole nipper too that would be yeah pole nipper would be great for that kind of stuff and then uh basswood yep yep just Maybe little wood. stuff you know sure. so you can focus on that i'll get do you is there any uh particular head clearance you want for clearance pruning what whatever you think is gonna look nice okay i mean seven you know eight -ish. seven eight ish yeah something like that doesn't have to be a full 10 10 feet but well, I'll go set a line. Okay. Well, we couldn't have asked for better weather. No, you couldn't have. And the rain we need is just not as fast as we thought. Yeah, we're, I think uh, the next couple days are going to be soggy. Yeah. yeah, this ended up being very nice weather. So this is a, a client of my friend John who passed recently. And he would come out here and kind of just serve her needs here and just kind of go through. It's just sort of, well, here's a day rate I'll do for you. So I told her, I'll do that for you. And uh, so I'm going to move around to these different trees and uh, we'll do some obviously some clearance here but I'm sure we've got a fair amount of deadwood in this locust now my tallest lead is right here yeah she is a delight she's out here by herself working the property she keeps it nice look at this um, Mark soliciting her over there for hire <laughs> Mark. Mark's our salty guy. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. I I did tell him not to stop in his in his in an affirmation statement I made to him. So he has permission to be salty. Salt is actually good for us, you know, it's... Okay, I think I'm gonna get a good set out of this if it comes through. I think it win. Oh, tried to come get me. Little devil. Yeah, I'm on a good branch. There's a little saying on the crew. Groundies beware, Kevin's in the air. Yeah. I I have a tendency to be fairly linearly focused. And uh I may not see all the details around me, including people. Yeah, I, I imagine he did. In this maple. It's kind of a cool old open grown Norway maple. Uh, without really a tie in point. I don't really have to do much. I do have to scoot out that limb. I think this, again, this side lateral is probably my preferred tie-in. Oh. 
Oh, that's right where I wanted to be. Well, I can drag drag one up and put it right in. I'll bring a second throw line back for that later. So we'll get a little roof clearance here and some ground clearance. Got some deadwood here we can get out. And uh, and then these lower clearances here. Yeah. Get some of this. I can probably limb walk out here and do some of this. Mark can get some of that too. But. Yeah, I'm sure he can. Well, I was in Door County for a whole week, eight eight days, Sunday to Sunday, and uh, now we're back at recording. And uh, I thought this would be a good one. Give a little tribute to John and uh, and Eileen was just a delightful personality, so we'll get her in here a little bit. I'm sure she might test my uh, safety protocols and walk under me occasionally. We'll have to watch out for her. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> You'll catch me if I come down, okay. I prefer you not be close enough to catch me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm double your body weight. <laughs> so. so this is a new, new thing that I got. Yeah, look at that. So here's what we're gonna do. So this is my backed up. So it's gonna go up, but it won't come back down. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing some recording today. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like and now with uh with hands-free uh technology, everybody's talking to themselves in their car as they're on their phones. I, Eileen, I have a t-shirt that says, of course I talk to myself. Sometimes I want an expert opinion. <laughs> yeah, it's just very simple. Okay. The only way I'm going to get my line on the right side of the universe here is to pull the whole thing through. I'm I guess I got a guy on the ground, but I oftentimes climb as if I'm solo. So if I'm solo, I never want to limit myself by shortchanging my rope. So I leave all of my rope on the one end, but now, now I have to uh, disconnect, reconnect, and now I have to pull this rope all the way through. All right, so there's no real dead wood up here. Little piece. Now we're gonna Descend down through here on a bite. <clears throat> Redirect through this carabiner. So then, uh, brings it straight into my akimbo. Okay.
Brand new blade. That's nice. Cutting very nicely. Okay, so that covers the. It's an odd branch. Oh, that's dead. And we might as well get that off of there. It's a locust, it'll be trouble soon enough. That's probably fine. Probably lean back from here. Got a pretty tight akimbo. Where am I gonna go now? I wanna go over there. That's how I got disconnected in the or disqualified in the work climb at the competition is I landed it in on my left side and I came across and I, I was gonna attach into one of these front ones and I attached into this one you know it was just the first one I came to I'd have to reach across but then I was left to left all I had to do is come over here and go to that front one but I didn't. So, consequently, I could get my lantern over there. So I got a two sided lanyard. Oh, we got a train. by trains they'll say oh I hardly notice it it just kind of becomes something you're accustomed to my rope on the correct side of me here that was not an award-winning traverse convenience pruning thing is being by a train you've got the sound of silence is marked when it leaves So now, I'm landed it in, I probably want to redirect here. Where do I want to be on? Probably up there. Because I got to go over there. And I have to go over here. All right. You're bothering me. 
and you're bothering me. Looks like John pruned you before. Yeah, I think if I go up here, okay, I'm lanyarded in. That's all right. Oh, we got a little defect in this branch. But we're gonna be at a compression angle through that branch. Well, it turns out you're uh, you're running a little interference, Mark. <laughs> you provide good uh, conversation for Eileen. I am sure that she would be right under me. Yeah, this akimbo is pretty tight. I'd rather take tight than loose. Holy mackerel. Visually check your connection. Yeah, that's why I don't want you under me, Eileen. Well, what about you, Kevin? Yeah, well, you know. You care about me? Well, there, eh, there's, there's expendable and then there's replaceable. <laughs> Making jokes of Mark's intrinsic worth, which of course he's worth everything. Take care of that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be coming over to that side of the tree, Eileen. Not right now, but I'm coming over that way. So when you come back, don't don't come back under there. So how long have you been here, Eileen? January 7th, of 1977. Wow. Moved in on a blizzard. January 7th, 1977? Yeah. What did you say, Mark? That was a Star Wars movie release? Yeah, the very first one, 77. Yeah. Yeah, well that kind of wowed us, you know, it was cutting edge technology at the time, S special effects. Yeah, Big Jake, <laughs> can't forget that one. Yeah, I remember in that movie Big Jake right at the end. It's a big face off and John Wayne's got the shotgun boarding down on the on the bad guy. No matter what happens, no matter who gets killed, I'm going to blow your head off. <laughs> it's like <sighs> the ultimate leverage. <clears throat> Yeah, 
Good old days of movies. Well, you have some long-standing Nectria canker in this tree. Yeah, and they'll persist for quite some time with it. Okay. That's good for me. It's uh, it's considered a perennial canker. It, the tree during the growing season, kind of gains advantage, but then in the winter the fungus stays active, oh. and the tree goes dormant. So the, the fungus advances during the winter, but it's on virtually every limb and it's been a long time. In some places the tree completely closed up, other places it's visible. See all these little cankers, but some of them it totally overcomes it and other places the canker persists. So there's a more active one right there. Yeah, I imagine it. Yeah, when we were down, we do a project in Guatemala and sometimes the monkeys can wonder what you're doing in their tree. Except they can uh they can come and throw feces at you and do things <laughs> so somehow somehow they know what would be offensive to us oh oh <laughs> oh i think it's a problem <laughs> She did, and I and I got her, Mark. I, I I put one right in the middle of her back, a little twig. You're not surprised at all by that. I know. I, I, I'm supposed to see you wearing red. I I did functionally warn you. I, I was completely transparent about my weaknesses. <laughs> Full disclosure. I probably will not see you if you're under me. Even if I'm talking to you about Nectria canker. <laughs> oh, to have the clients working with you that is something they'll never obey okay let's see here i gotta go over there that's actually a branch i was right next to i'm just gonna climb back up and over get some of this riffraff out of my way I think I got some silence here. I'm gonna do an Instagram video and a YouTube short, all the same deal. We gotta do an IG post on this Nectria canker. So I'm in a honey locust here. This is Nectria canker. And it's a perennial canker. You can see it started a long time ago in here. And then in the winter, the tree goes dormant and the fungus stays active and it advances. And then the tree, you know, wakes up in the spring and grows. And then it advances again. And it does this perpetual annual, perennial 
advancement on the tree. So likely this will desiccate this this winter and and that canker will get progressively bigger until that limb possibly you know secedes completely now you can see all through the tree it's got nectary canker all over it but occasionally the tree will will win over and close them you can see it closed in here so um this tree's had it for a long time and apparently is is going to make it quite a long time further so nectria canker now it is also transferable to maple so i'll want to clean up my saws before i go over there game of trees we're having fun okay here about done with the upper canopy of this A little bit of deadwood out there. Step across. All right. The old gas chipper sounds like a Camaro starting up. Up in the Norway maple now. Just cleaning off my saws here. We're doing some roof clearance. A couple more to go. Mark took lunch. So I think she's working around here somewhere. I gotta keep an eye out for her. There she is over there. Okay, look at these little specimens she has here. You got a smoke tree, and that had some desiccated leaves here from an early frost, is what my theory is. And she's got this little sergeant crab. And look at that, she's kind of espaliered it. That takes effort <laughs> to do that. That's remarkable. And then this standard lilac, look at that. She's got that fashioned into a tree. Yeah, that's beautiful. And then a Japanese tree lilac, which got canted years ago. And it's got a pretty significant issue on this side, but you know, it's got a good, good tension root out here, tension flare, and uh, everything's kind of curving up you know, orientating with against gravity. Uh, so it's been that way for a long time. That's cool. And look at this crab. Beautiful open grown structure. And she's had my friend John, who is deceased now, working here for a while. And he's got these pruned out nicely. Look at that. It's beautiful. I'm gonna jump up in there and take some suckers out of the upper canopy. But yeah, a beautiful birch in the corner and uh, autumn purple ash, white ash, Fraxinus americana. A little bit of borer activity going on there. That's treated. And uh, so, yeah, and I believe, is that a Kentucky coffee? No, that's an elm. That's a hybrid elm right there in the middle. So that's. That's a good specimen too. And a nice basswood form. Big autumn blaze over there. I'm gonna have some stuff to do in there. But yeah, a lot of this stuff looking good. 
We're having fun today. Okay, Mark was over here. I think I'll just jump up in here. Look at this. It's a beautiful little tree. Man. At age five, I would have loved this tree. I mean, at age 59, 58. I shouldn't wish my, wish my years away. I'm still 58. Somebody else in my life had a birthday recently, but I won't mention who. So, yeah, a little free climb right up here. Okay, I better tie in. I do have a an associate in Wisconsin who uh, is in a wheelchair from a crab apple. Fell out pruning a crab apple. Fractured his lower spine. And, uh, <sighs> So yeah, you can't take it for granted. Get your lanyard on these little things. All right, lots of suckers. They should have a little hand pruner in here, but oh well. I'm not really an oak man. Kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a uke man. But, I mean, if I lived where eucalyptus is where I would, I would definitely relish taking them down. But maybe those that, uh, you that do would tell me that I wouldn't relish taking them down. <laughs> For the dull chainsaws and everything else, I hear that they produce havoc on a dead, a dead uke will produce havoc on a chainsaw chain. But. Yeah, this is a this is a cool tree. You know, it's good to find appreciation in the small trees too. You know, when you come across a cool small tree, you got to acknowledge it. So yeah, John would come out here solo. I was going to come out here solo today, but I brought Mark, and Mark's been good interference. I'm sure Eileen would be right underneath me. She has been, as is evidenced earlier in the video. All right, we don't have to take off every sucker. It is getting some energy from the suckers. I really should have a hand pruner in here. It'd probably be faster with a hand pruner. Two in one lanyard. I think the only thing I'm gonna do on this ash, I might take off that whole infested lead. And just get rid of those bores that are in there. Yeah, it's pretty infested on this side. I think I'm gonna take it out. Is this uh, too high above my head to cut? Maybe.
but I felt it was predictable. There's more deadwood up there, so well, that's actually alive still. I'm gonna leave the rest of that. I think that tree's done. Look at this hybrid elm. It's a nice tree. I might like that low branch. I made some firewood over there for you. Now you might be in trouble though. When I asked her, she said we weren't supposed to touch the ash. Being treated, and see if anything was going to come back. Ringing a bell? No, it's not. Disgust? Okay. But that branch had a lot of bore in it, so I thought I'd get rid of the bore. We'll go with what the arborist said. Yeah. yeah. She did tell me. I, my professional opinion mattered. I wasn't gonna spend a lot of time in the ash for sure. <laughs> right. I think we have something loose in there that needs to be. Uh, I found out what it is. What is it? A little side plate. It sits by a feed wheel and when you push it, it stops rattling. So we need to tack that down. Silence it, and you know I won't be pulling your leg. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I think we'll thin this out. That's a pretty good union. It's kicking out, kicking out bark right there. You know, for an elm, elm unions are all like this. So, but I can go up and suppress this branch a little bit and slow it down just a little. Let this get bigger. Yeah, we're planting some legacy elms. Or uh, triumph elms. I think this is. Triumph. So we'll be training some of these in the future. And they're they're kind of a decurrent branch structure. suppress here. It will. Coming at ya.
that choose where it's gonna go now. <clears throat> Come at ya. Well, I pulled an executive decision. I took one branch off the ash tree. Really? I thought it was, uh, you know, seceded so far. It had a large population of boars in the branch. We'll just get rid of the boars. Okay. It was on the back side, so. I, I looked out there. The bad side is on the back. Yeah. But that's going to be a beautiful tree in about a week. Yeah. <laughs> you did give me executive privilege. Uh, you did give me executive privilege. <laughs> <laughs> that's in material. I think I'll take it. Here. Yeah. All right, because we want this one to take off. So I'm going to get this out of here and slow this down. All right, make it a drop cut. the stub. Go back up. Tighten up this lanyard. Yeah, yeah, this is a hairy elm. <sighs> Need that 
vertical to stretch out this way a little bit. Now that I've recessed this one, uh, that one will probably go out into that area a little bit more. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh. Is it gonna let me get all the way down? <sighs> Close. He used all the 20 footer there. Oh, my friend Bill, I put out a Instagram message for him. He got some fundraising, got down to Mexico to the cancer center in Tijuana and spent three weeks down there and actually was, was fairly comfortable. Got some other treatments, helped him out. And, his wife Valerie was down there with him the whole time and he got back and just when he got moved into his house he had something going on that required getting to the hospital went to the ER had a blood clot in his left lung which he's got lung cancer and then they subsequently found had gone into his bones, into his ribs. And so he passed today. I just got a message on the phone. So at the time of this recording, my good friend Bill Richardson, who sold sold trees for me for a number of years uh, in two different stints. Uh, back in 2010, to about 2012, 13, and then again in 2019 to about 2022, then I took them over again. And so, yeah, I spent a lot of time with Bill. Bill Richardson, Navy SEAL good man yeah. so put up some prayers for his wife Valerie they were married 10 years ago I gave the, the message at their wedding so death to them part that's a tough reality right there Get on there, at least. So I can't go to the ground. Sorry, Mark. I didn't warn you I was hiding. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear you announce yourself, so. But I didn't announce myself. But you know it should be assumed. Oh, these silky saws and an apple just are not the right tool sometimes. I need a finer tooth. Every little, every little contact with all these little nicks. So easy to do in the young bark of the apple. Uh.
something. Something is on me. That would be called convenience prune. Well, I'm glad I brought somebody because she'd be work but she's been dragging brush. Get up here to the dead branches. <laughs> well, if I wasn't carnivore, <coughs> I might eat one of these. But there's 20 grams of carb in one of those apples. That would be all I'm allotted in a day. Wow. That's sick. Okay. Come on. I win. Oh, I got caught another one. Winning once wasn't enough. I gotta try to win twice. Mark, there's a couple of dead branches hanging there in the... Okay. What's that? No rays on the apple in case you got... Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was aware of that. You want an apple down there, Mark? There's a couple up here. This looks uh, looks looks pretty good. Where are you at? Oh, of course. You make me sit and look at this. Uh, I think I got you a good one. Somebody else been up here eating them. <clears throat> How's your arm? I'm right here. You know, Eileen, I've I've been on the carnivore diet for like four months, so I haven't had any carbohydrates, virtually. I mean, a, a couple. I've test-driven 
driven a couple things, but wow. yeah. So if anybody says it can't be done, <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well I've lost 20 uh 27 pounds and oh my. and I feel like a million bucks. My labs are looking good, everything's looking good. Metabolically healthy. So What was your motivator? Um well that and uh, you know, I saw some signs of insulin resistance oh. showing up, you know, and oh. so I thought, well, let's see, and, and all those have gone away. I had, you know, some skin issues that have all cleared up. Excellent. So there was inflammation somewhere. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it, it had some really positive effects. Very good apple, Kevin. Very good apple? Not too hard, not too sweet. Perfect, yeah. I was hoping for a good experience for you. Yeah, I think it's the only untouched one up here. So there was one apple just for you, Mark. I didn't wonder at all. <laughs> I was just happy for the the grace of it not being an uh, uh, you know an injury or anything. Yeah, you come across to me as a pretty tough cookie. <clears throat> I would imagine somebody better have their facts straight to get in an argument with you, that's for sure. Yes, you know, very, very few issues have been uh, begun over what is not said. <laughs> wow, how did I do that? How is that? There we go. I got a lot of slack in this bay of boy, I'm not really tied on. that can stay for now and the oak we just treated that today with FAC injection so that should be green next year so we'll take a picture of it right here and uh, See how green it is next year.
We got anything in this maple. That's pretty clean too, except for some ground clearance. be taking some off of here look at the look at these low boughs like that one is actually you know rooted it's like a literally like it comes out of the ground it's like a buttress root that sprouted a branch that's pretty cool I'll have to do an Instagram on that because the ground hasn't changed and this one's right on the ground so I don't think we're doing anything to this one Ginkgo. Maybe a couple of suppression cuts. I'll have her with me to do that. Oh. Well, if you're not too worn out, you might get some mowing done yet before the sun goes down. What's that? Well, there you and go. What I do. <laughs> and that, I, I think I have 88 feet with it. I come out with a mindset and somehow it goes. Yeah. Well, you do want to walk around front and take a look at things? I can, this won't take long. You can point and I can shoot. take this one away oh that yeah said? yeah is that true I, I yep I, I would yeah that's okay. definitely and that's all the way down there and there's other little laterals that and this this one here should come off too I just don't look. yeah don't look Yeah, but sunshine will fill it out. Everybody's seen your signs on your vehicles, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> In a month, you won't remember that they were there. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Okay, we're all right here, correct? Everything's okay. Yeah, these are, I love your huge lilacs. Okay, They're... all right, so we're good there. Yeah. You were going, this is going to be a tree, Kevin. Yes. And you so I was thinking of subordinating some of these lower ones. And... Just a tad, nothing drastic. Okay. We just have to slow them down just a little okay. and keep them honest. Um, I think I'll take this one. I'll 
take this one. I'll take one of these. So that'll just slow them down. That one can come off. It's kind of a oddball. Um, this lowest one can come off. Keep that little guy down there for taper. Uh, it just helps the trunk continue to grow. Okay. And it's not that big. It's not a big deal to have it on there, but it helps right. the trunk girth. Okay. And uh, this is temporary, so I'm going to bring this to this lateral here. And this is probably going to gain some energy now that we've fine-tuned it. So I think that's good for now. Okay. They had a lot of new growth on it. Yeah, and now now it'll still have, you know, a lot of energy in the roots. It's and it's going to push next year. So okay. I mean, we we had a good yes. You know, 16 inches of growth there. Yeah. Uh Both it's going to start to push. So, uh, Carpinus caroliniana. Is that one right there? Yeah. That's a beauty. Yeah, I gave that an Instagram post. Oh. <laughs> That's a beauty. Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, it could stay. It's really not interfering with you yet. No, it's not. And um, okay. yeah, let it let it use all of its energy to okay. put on some more girth. It's kind of neat how it's got a single stem down there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Good to go, and that would be it then. I think we're good. I just got to jump up and take a few branches off that maple. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to give a tribute to John, yeah. what would you say? If, if you were to give three, four, five, six sentences about John, what, what was significant about John. about John to you? John made me feel like I was somebody that I didn't have. I, I wasn't just a, a, a person. I was a, a an individual, someone he took into his heart and educated me uh, on nature. Yeah, and that is priceless to me. He always left having taught me something, and. Um, he really appreciated everything in nature. Oh, he did indeed. You know, he, he had utmost respect for it. Yeah. So, um, and, and I noticed that when he worked with his employees, he never belittled them. And yeah. I thought that was remarkable because he had cause too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you hear that, Kevin? Kevin doesn't, doesn't have cause to belittle anything. No. <laughs> no, I'm sure Kevin doesn't, but John did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, John, John uh, became uh, a family member to me. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. That's it. And you know, we heard a lot of that. I, I, did, I did his funeral, and so I met just a ton of people came out that day. Oh, yeah. And and it was just one, one. I mean, very similar to what you said. You know, he'd sit down on the porch with them. He, yeah. You know, he would take time. Yeah. And and yeah. he was just really personable that way. Right. And he went out of his way to come and stop and and see me. It wasn't. I was, I'm here to. What can I do for your job? Right. He'd be somewhere <laughs> close. He'd stop by and say so hi. He'd be driving down the road <laughs> and he'd see me. Hey! And he'd pull over and he'd talk and yeah. he'd bring his dog out and he'd sit on the steps and do his paperwork while Quirkus would run through the yard. And do yeah. His thing. You know. That's that, neat. That warmed my heart. Yeah. Did. That's neat. Yeah. That's neat. Well, thank. Thanks yeah. for that. that yeah. And this has been a delightful day. I'm so glad we had the good weather. Perfect day for this. Perfect. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can get a little mowing done before I dark. I am going to. I'm going to get the wood out of my way and... You are a worker. Hustle. Feed the deer their apples. <laughs> yeah. I threw a couple down from the top. Okay. All right. Good.
good. So. I'll go in and get my checkbook. Okay, okay. great. Okay. Thanks, Eileen. And are you taking right. off, Mark? I am. Okay. Well, Pleasure. Like? Like so. Like so. Absolutely. So, all right. Hope to see you soon. Sounds like good. in a year. <laughs> yeah. Year soon, sure. I, I can't say that I'll be just driving by. Oh, I know, I know. You're not gonna hike but up I, from if I did, some prairie or party probably, just to stop in. Probably not, but if okay. I do, I'll honk and I'll stop. Uh, I have a dog named Buck, <laughs> but if I let him run around, he'd be gone. Oh, probably the last week yeah. see him again. Oh, okay. so he's trouble. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, dogs have personality. Yes, he he's full of it. Well, thank okay. you. You bet. Take care. All right. I will. Bye-bye. Well, that's Game of Trees. Beautiful story. Beautiful tribute. And we had a fun time here today. And uh, we had a lot of fun. She's got a great yard. A lot of, lot of cool stuff. So, Game of Trees, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Playing the game of trees